the inside story on the issues that affect you and your community. This is Local 12 Newsmakers. Celebrations are going on in high schools all over the region this time of the year, but one local high school has a special reason to cheer. Good morning and welcome to Local 12 Newsmakers. I'm Dan Hurley. DePaul Cristo Rey, a Catholic high school, opened its doors four years ago, offering students a special educational experience. In addition to literature and math, history and science, every student works five days a month in businesses all over the region. The money they earn helps pay their tuition, but the experiences they gain can open possibilities far beyond anything sitting in a classroom could possibly deliver. Earlier this month, Local 12 reporter Angela Ingram featured the experience of one DePaul Cristo Ray Sr. Jasmine Wade works closely with her manager. The 18-year-old works five days a month while balancing her schoolwork as a high school senior. She attends DePaul Cristo Ray, where there's a prestigious work-study program. In my ninth grade year, I was at the prosecuting office. My 10th grade year, I worked at Good Samaritan Hospital. My 11th grade year, I worked at St. Elizabeth Physicians. This year, Totes Isotoner is where Jasmine's mentors are watching her bloom. Jasmine wanted to be a doctor, but is finding the design department here is a place to show her creative side, and she's designed an umbrella that Totes plans to sell. My supervisor told me to, she wanted me to make something that I thought teens would like, and so... The first thing I thought of was the new trends that are out, and the first thing that came to mind was Aztec print. I wanted to give her some experience um, designing versus just cutting things out and filing and that kind of stuff. I wanted her to get that experience. Um, I have two daughters myself, 21 and 18, and I always encourage them to find their passion. The high school's work-study program teaches professionalism in the workplace. Our goal is to really expose students in four years to four different industries so they get a sense of what they like and what they don't like. The opportunity for our students to work alongside competent, caring professionals is to elevate them. Totes is one of 104 companies that employ students like Jasmine, and for this college-bound senior, the experience has been invaluable. The school has a way of trying to get out things that are inside of you that you have no idea, because I had no idea that I could design an umbrella. In Westchester, Angela Ingram, Local 12 News. I am joined now by Sister Jean Bissett, the founding president of DePaul Cristo Rey, and two leaders of the first senior class, Mary Ann Chismoro. Chimosaro. Chimosaro. <laughs> I'm never going to get that right. It is the valedictorian. And Keon Humphrey, that's easier, is the salutatorian. <laughs> welcome to Newsmaker. Thank you, Dan. Gene, yeah. welcome back. Um, this is the first class. <laughs> You've been building for four years, adding a class each year. So you started as freshmen. Yes. Mm -hmm. Let's, Marianne, let's begin with you. Mm -hmm. Sort of where, what work sites have you been in? Well, my freshman year, I was at the Reds Hall of Fame and Museum. Sophomore year, I was at Burke and Schindler, which is a public taxing and accounting office. My junior year, I was at the Christ Hospital and their supply chain in the basement. And this year, I'm at the Kroger Company. And first semester, I was at Human Resources. And this semester, I'm in Kroger Personal Finance. Keon, what about you? Um, I've worked at the um, Hamilton County Prosecuting Attorney's Office my freshman year. Which we've heard before. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, my sophomore year, I worked at the um, Free Store Food Bank um, down on Central Parkway. My junior year, I got to work at um, City Hall under P.G. Sittenfeld, and this year I work at Xavier University. Okay. How do you pick the places? Now, I mean, obviously you're trying to um, get as many companies involved as possible, and the 104 figure is pretty recent. Is that yes. this year? Yes. Okay, and you could use some more. Yes, I always, always want to make that point. <laughs> always. Uh, but in terms of assigning a particular student to a particular company, when, they're, when the students are very young, so ninth and 10th grade in particular, we try to match them more by personality than by career interests mm -hmm. or uh, the job that they'll actually be doing. So if we know that a supervisor at a company is 
uh, willing to work with a very quiet student mm -hmm. and try to bring some of their inner personality out, we might match somebody up that way. If a company wants, though, a, a student who's going to be at a front desk uh, greeting people, a receptionist, then we would try to get somebody that's more outgoing right off the bat. Uh, but it's it's not there's no science to it whatsoever. It's more of a <laughs> but as the students get older, we do try to pay a little bit of attention. We interview mm -hmm. our kids about what might you be thinking about. We're not a vocational school. Our kids are going to college at this point, but uh, they want to try out some careers if they can. Marianne, what do you what's what's in store for you going forward? And then does that have any connection to the job experiences? that you've had. Yes, it does. I want to be a physical therapist or a, per and a personal trainer and so working at the Christ Hospital I was able to see like I might be in a hospital helping people and so that experience did come in handy with picking my career choice. And did you have that idea before you went to Christ Hospital or did that really emerge there? Before I wanted to be a pediatrician and so like so being it's in, in the Christ field. It, was in, it was all in the field of it. So. But so it diversified what was possible. Sometimes mm -hmm. people think only doctors and nurses mm -hmm. are the only <laughs> options in, in, the in health healthcare. Field, no, not at all. So, yeah. yeah. Again, what about you? What, um, where, what's next for you? Um, well, what's next for me is I want to be um, a political cam um, campaign advisor. Ah, uh, PG Sittenfeld. <laughs> okay, go ahead. <laughs> so uh, my corporate job definitely did help me, and it helped me guide to what I want to do in college with political science and whatnot. And where are you headed for college? Um, Loyola University of Chicago. Very good. It's not Xavier, but it is Jesuit, so that, that's, okay. that's okay. And Marianne, where are, are you going? I don't know if you mentioned that. I'll be going to Franklin and Marshall College in Pennsylvania. Okay. Now, when you look back on these four years, and you have friends, I am sure, who didn't go to DePaul Christo Ray, how do you think this particular kind of educational experience impacted the who you are at this moment in your life. How is it different than if you had gone to any high school, any other high school that didn't have these work experiences? Well, I wouldn't have a resume, first of all, that I can have the different experiences and interning in different areas, which is also a different thing that I see from my friends and I. I'm, I act a little bit more professional in certain areas, and I, you can see that because of the CWSP program, it's it's always there. The CWSP. Corporate Work Study Program. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> That's what we call it. Ken, what about you? Um, for the most part, I hang out with friends. Uh, my friends are at DePaul, but I do have a few friends on, out um, on the outside of DePaul. And I think my future and their future are going in two different paths. I mean, I think DePaul definitely did give me that straight line that it gave me something that I could look forward to, I guess. Okay. Um, I noticed that in the materials that you sent ahead, mm -hmm. all of your students, all your graduating seniors uh, are headed for college. Yes. And so how many graduating seniors are 48. There? 48 for this first class. Yes. How large is your, um, say, freshman class this uh, year? We are around 90 students in our fresh freshman class. So almost twice as almost large. Almost twice as yeah. large. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> And did you start out with 90? We started out close to 90 with this class. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, our first class, I think we, we made some mistakes. Some of the students, I think, as the program progressed, said, this really isn't for me. Sure. Uh, so, you know, some made the choice. We helped some make a choice that would be a better fit for them. Mm -hmm. uh, but the 48 that have persisted in this first class, mm -hmm. you know, they started, they were freshmen and seniors <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> then they were sophomores <laughs> and seniors. So That's very dangerous, that's sophomores very <laughs> and seniors. <laughs> My what view, a combination. My view is that all sophomores should be sent out to a farm somewhere. Yeah, they grow up right. about eight years from that, uh, between right. those. Yeah. So um, when you look back academically, and you're headed for college, mm -hmm. academically, what about the education that you received at DePaul Christo Rey? Uh, I'm not saying remove that corporate experience, because that feeds everything. But what about just the academics, the learning math, learning history? What, how would you evaluate the program that you were using? It's very challenging. It's very challenging, but the teachers are always there to help. So if you don't understand anything, the teachers will stay after school for hours and hours with you. It's, it's up to par. It's very, very challenging. 
Uh, I would have to agree. The learning environment is completely different from other high schools. We do have those different, we have those desks. Not desks, but we have the um, two people desks. So you can do a lot of teamwork. There's a lot of individual work. So I mean, you get to find out what kind of learner you are. As long as you bring that up, does that translate out into the work environment? Yes, almost certainly. What you're saying, yeah. how? They don't have, in, the, in our workplaces, we don't have tiny little desks for individuals. You're working at, in, in cubicles with other people, collaborating with other people, call, your colleagues. That's, that, se that sense of the workplace mm -hmm. is a teamwork, collaborative, exactly. exactly. problem-solving exactly. world, mm -hmm. you know, which sometimes that doesn't come across in, this, in the traditional school. Our school, as we've designed the school, and you know we've grown gradually from Five classrooms to now five buildings. Yeah. <laughs> uh, our class, we really well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we we don't have. I wouldn't say twenty-two classrooms. We have twenty-two conference rooms. Hmm. It is a very collaborative yeah. mm -hmm. uh, model. Mm -hmm. We want students working and learning and solving problems together. What about? And I, I, I'm not saying what. What's what was your best work experience? Verse, you know, I mean, you, you had these, each of you had four different places. Mm -hmm. let's, let's start with Keon this time, <laughs> because I think it may be easier because it, it sounds like it grows almost directly. We're, what you're going to do next grows out of one of those. But what was your best work experience and what made it the best? Um, well, obviously City Hall with right. P.G. Sinfeld. Um, what probably made it the best was the fact that I got to network. I got to be around other politicians. Um, I had a, I had a, talk with constituents, I had to do a lot of things that direct that was directly related to my future field of um, study. Could you have done that as a freshman? As a freshman? Maybe not. I don't <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think I don't think I had that ability to network like that. There's there's something about just being out there mm -hmm. and being able to Mm -hmm. if you're working in City Hall with a bunch of politicians, <laughs> you can't just be quiet. You have to be out there working yourself. Mm -hmm. You have to have some assertiveness and yeah. whatever. Marianne, how about you? My best experience has been this year at the Kroger Company. Uh, my supervisor, Vanessa, she gives me a lot of advice on college. She's helped me. She almost helped me pick my college based on like her experience in college and seeing what it did for her and like the regrets that she has and she like me not making the same mistakes that she did. So having that person, almost like a mentor to me, so as having my supervisor. What about your families? Where, you know, how do they look on the experience these last four <laughs> years, and how do they look about, you're both leaving town, leaving yeah. home, <laughs> how do they look on that? Just get on Facebook, you'll see it all. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, my mom's really proud of me, she's really happy for uh, my future, and she's just, she's thankful for DePaul. She's thankful for all of that it can do. Is she the person who chose DePaul, or did you choose? How did, how did you end up at DePaul? <laughs> all right, so I had to choose between St. Xavier, um, Roger Bacon, and DePaul. Um, and when I went to DePaul, they told me I could be a trailblazer. So I decided I wanted to be the trailblazer, and I chose DePaul. And you're going into politics. Yes, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and what about you? What, how's your family? My family is very proud of me. They, we're from Zimbabwe, and so me being able to come here and make something of myself is something very big to them and they appreciate. I appreciate the sacrifices they've made so with those sacrifices that pushes me harder and so seeing them push me is it's great. How so, old were you when you came? I was about 10 years old going 2006 so maybe like 8, 10-ish around 10, okay. 11 years old. So. so one thing that strikes me is you're totally comfortable with English. I, I would not. No, no, seriously, I would never have guessed. D do you speak multiple languages? I speak Shona and English, and we speak Spanish at school, but okay. I do speak Shona. And you and study English. Spanish. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. All right. So you've made multiple jumps here. Yes. Okay. Yes, I have. In Zimbabwe, they teach English from first grade on up until you get into university. So if we can speak it, you can write it. That's, that's one of the things that we say. <laughs> yeah, but it's different than being totally fluent and comfortable with the language. And you're amazingly <laughs> Thank totally. You. <laughs> Thank you. Um, how do you feel? as you approach graduation. <laughs> you, you, well, and let's make clear, you were here before there were any students. I you, was. You, you were hired 
a year ahead? Two years. Two years exactly. ahead to, to lay the groundwork. Right. How are you feeling? Well, part of me feels like this, you know, the school is six years old. Um, <laughs> they just didn't what know that. So exactly. <laughs> so, you know, I, I was the pre-freshman for a couple of years. Well, obviously, uh, I'm bursting with pride, but I'm bursting with pride on, the, on behalf of a lot of people behind the scenes. Um, people not so behind the scenes, they're teachers, the administrators who have played such a key role, but also when I think about the people the Sisters of Charity put together to form a feasibility study, they were working on the school before they hired me. Right. So the school is really probably about eight or nine years old mm -hmm. in its conception and its uh, planning. We have a, a robust board of directors. We've got committees all over the place. We just had our uh, third uh, auction, mm -hmm. uh, dinner auction, Ray of Light. Ray of Light. <laughs> uh, we packed our little gym with 420 mm -hmm. friends, virtually none of whom are our parents, and we have no alumni. So this has really been a powerful experience of the community coming together because people believe that education alone is going to transform young people and uh, they're the result. Well I can say if this has been an eight year or a ten year <laughs> effort uh, these two people indicate why it's worth it. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank Have you. fun this week. <laughs> Stay tuned after the break and establish West Side Theater as its new home. The vitality of over 50,000 people at the Covedale and 336 different zip codes represented by our patrons means that that neighborhood has been given a new perspective by all of those people from all over the place, not just the West Siders who all know and love this area already. An established West Side cultural institution will celebrate the opening of its new home this coming week. Over the last 14 years, Landmark Productions has built a successful, multifaceted theater operation based at the Covedale Theater. This coming week, Landmark will open and celebrate the opening of a new theater the, in Price Hill, the Incline Theater. So, I want to, this morning I am joined now by Tim Perino the Executive Artistic Director of the Cincinnati Landmark Productions, and Joseph Huber, the Chief Operating Officer of Cincinnati Development Fund, which helped make this, a, this new facility a possibility. Welcome to Newsmakers. Congratulations. Thank you. Well, we're having fun. Well, I'm glad you're having fun because we still haven't made it to uh, um, getting shots of the new building, and we're going to get there, but um, we, we, I didn't have anything brand new and fresh to show, which is our problem. There's a lot of brand new and fresh there. <laughs> so, what does this new theater, uh, and it's the Warsaw Federal Incline Theater, and yes. we've, we've talked about that in an earlier show, uh, what's this new theater provide for you? Well, for the theater, for our company, uh, as you know, we're called Cincinnati Landmark Productions, and so we consider this to be uh, a, a new location, in, or a new theater in a landmark location. This is the site of the old Price Hill Incline. The top of the, of the Price Hill Incline. Absolutely, Cincinnati top of the Incline. And uh, it, it's a neighborhood that uh, is very near and dear to our heart. Um, um, you know, is really on the rise. I don't think people understand that the new neighborhood that East Price Hill Incline District is becoming mm -hmm. is very exciting, is uh, very progressive, lots of great folks, and exciting opportunities like, first of all, the Warsaw Federal Theater. Joe, what was the role of your organization in this whole thing? And you know, your organization maybe is not well known to the average person out there. What's, what's been your role? Well, uh, Cincinnati Development Fund has been around uh, lending in Greater Cincinnati since 1988. So we are a well-heeled community development financial institution, a CDFI. And um, our role in the, the Incline Theater is um, a community development entity which uh, brought the new market tax credits to the project. Um, new market tax credits are very difficult to try to explain in a short segment like this, but essentially um, it's intended to um, incent a private investment into uh, distressed or disinvested struggling neighborhoods. And so um, it provides the needed equity to make 
deals happen that wouldn't without the tax credits. So we brought the allocation. PNC Bank bought the tax credits, and they were a great partner on this as well. So uh, through that, in a partnership with the city of Cincinnati, CRC, and all kinds of community support, mm -hmm. uh, the financing came together. Tim, how long has this been either a dream or an actual, you know, you've been right. working on it. How, how long has it taken to get here? We've been very active with the last uh, three and a half years. Um, well, in some ways, that's pretty quick. Yeah, I agree. Uh, but it certainly as a dream someday, uh, I would say we go back even further that. Our company started as Cincinnati Young People's Theater, and that was right. 34 years ago. Um, and as things progressed each time, it was like, well, you know, what's the next big exciting thing? Um, that does not mean we're looking for a third theater. <laughs> that means we've got our two now and uh, we're Cove back. Cobedale. So you will remain in Cobedale. Absolutely. Well. The Cobedale Performing Arts Center is still going to be Big Daddy, a uh, 400-seat theater uh, operating uh, normal theater season September to May, and then our Young People's Theater still in the summer and theater camps in the summer with the uh, preteens. Um, but the but the Warsaw Federal Incline Theater will have a summer season to complement the Cobedale season and then a winter, fall, winter, spring season. That will be very different. It will be new uh, things. So it, it, artistically, it gives us a chance to spread our wings during the fall, winter, spring at the new theater, with shows that haven't fit our brand. I mean, we come from a background, obviously, with the showboat as well, a very big Broadway, you know, blockbuster kind of shows, and we love those. It's just there are other things in the world, and we love those too. How can theaters... How can a theater like this help revitalize not just a theater company and move it forward, not revitalize, but move it forward, but revitalize a neighborhood? What's the role that you see the theater in East Price Hill? Right. I, I know there's a lot of other things going on, too. but There is. I mean, arts in general has proven to be a catalyst for economic development across the country. Um, and, and we definitely believe that the, the new theater uh, at, in the Incline District will spur new restaurants, um, new businesses to choose to locate their um, residents, to choose to um, rehab their homes and, and buy homes in the area. Um, we see a very strong ripple effect forthcoming. So. And he's quoting that ripple effect study from the uh, you know, Cincinnati uh, Arts Way, but you know, the American for the Arts study shows that $26 is spent in every essentially neighborhood around a theatrical venue for every patron who comes there. So, you know, beyond you come, buying beyond the ticket. Beyond the ticket, yes, $26 each. Um, and it does really, really work. We have our Cove Deal model. We took over, a, you know, an aging movie house that truly was uh, in danger of being raised. And um, uh, we now have, as we've said, you know, 305 zip codes represented 50,000 people coming to the theater every year. Businesses around us who are putting in hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars in capital improvements because their business has improved, whether it's directly, like restaurants, or indirectly, like the next door. Uh, dentist who now has a full up patron base whereas he was starting to lose patrons because he had a derelict building next door. So what's going to happen here? I mean this is Sunday morning. This is a big week. What happens <laughs> What happens next Saturday? Oh, This is the big community celebration. Um, at 6 p.m. We, we invite anyone uh, from the area, from the whole 305 zip codes to come share the opening with us. We're going to have uh, music in the street. We're going to have a stage. We have a beer truck. We have wa uh, not water, soda pop and water and everything else. We've got pizza trucks. We've got, as I said, music. We've got this incredible view of the city of Cincinnati. And on top of that, you can come in and tour the new theater. So it's like an open house tour event, plus party in the street. And fireworks. Fireworks at the end at 930. Okay. So, and Joe... Is your role, once that theater opens, it then opens for productions on June 3rd. June 3rd, correct. Yeah, June, May 30th for the celebration. Correct. But June 3rd. Mm -hmm. Is you now, are you now on to a ne the next project? Are you looking at the next <laughs> opportunity? Well, you know, we, we've, be. we've been financing real estate development, um, you know, over the Rhine, Walnut Hills, North Side, Covington, all around Price Hill. Um, again for the past 28 years um, so this is not the only project we're, we're working on we're very excited about it we're going to continue to be a resource out there as a CDFI we fill a role that where traditional bank financing is not readily available so we feel we're always going to have a need and, and be providing 
good financing. Well, I want to make sure people can find you. So uh -huh. uh, to find out uh, about the new Warsaw Federal Incline Theater, including the community celebration that we were just talking about this Saturday, May the 30th, and the grand opening on June the 3rd, uh, go, uh, you can buy tickets uh, to the productions this summer and next season online at CincinnatiLandmarkProductions.com. It's the best way, best place to get all the information. Or call 513-241-6550. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you for being here this morning and have fun. Yes. Okay. Thank you for making Newsmakers a part of your Sunday morning. Join us again next week to meet the men and the women working to make our region better for the future. Have a good week. Thanks.